they want it? You can go by choice, yeah. Oh. I don't know. They would still want to take it. Yeah, you picked it yet? Okay. Uh, two action news, 19. Okay. Uh, this is the end, right? Do you have an anchor? Okay. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. As you can tell, the wind and the rain is really blowing here right now. Over the past two hours, we felt Hurricane Dean's. Okay, good morning. It is 4.30 a.m. on August 21st. We have Hurricane Dean making landfall in its uh, third landfalling location, and that is in the Yucatan Peninsula, right where we felt it was going to make landfall last night, and that is just north of, of uh, Belize here. And let's go ahead and see if we have any new recon fixes. Um, this is the area here that is going to be devastated here by this massive hurricane here. Let's go ahead and uh, read the advisory here from the National Hurricane Center as of 2 a.m. Uh, potentially catastrophic hurricane Dean bearing down on the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, let's see where our current position is. At 2 a.m., the eye of Dean was located by an Air, or Air Force Hurricane Hunter aircraft at 18.5 north, 86.8 west, or about 100 miles east of Chetumel, Mexico, and about 260 miles east-southeast of Campeche. Dean is moving to the west at 20, and this forecast is expected to continue today and tonight. And on the forecast track, the eye of Dean will make landfall along the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in a few hours. That has already occurred. Maximum sustained winds are near 160 mile per hour with higher gusting as a potentially catastrophic catalog, uh, Category 5 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. And major hurricane force winds extend out to 60 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds extend out to 175 miles from the center. The pressure is 911 millibars, 26.90 inches. And Dean is expected to produce 5 to 10 inches of rain. Storm surge flooding of 12 to 18 feet of, will be inundating all these areas you see on your screen right now. This is the area that is getting pounded as we speak. But actually, this area here, you know the area that we um, were, uh, Mahawal is the one, the area that is taking uh, ground zero right now and that would be this shot right here and this is the one we talked about on the broadcast last night with the orange building here in the middle of that site over the uh, last year or so by the way and here's the radar right before landfall here and we're going to animate this and the, of course the Mexican radars don't animate so uh, there's a few people on the internet that have come up with uh, the uh, looping ability here and there we go there's the there's the radar making landfall as we speak um, courtesy of tropicalatlantic.com and there there goes the center of circulation right in here and again we're expecting an 18 foot wall of water and right where my mouse pointer is that's where the town of Mahawal is located and this is uh, going to be devastated here tonight and again here's a close up view of this uh, of this city there it is right there that yellow building may not be there in the morning it's going to be interesting to see if they they can even get, I guess they'll get some aerial shots up here uh, over the next 24 hours or so. If there's anything good to be said about the time that this is making landfall here this morning, it's that it gives them a chance. This will be moving through quickly. It'll give them a chance to get up and do any rescue efforts that they need deem necessary here during the daylight hours rather than dealing with like Jamaica had to do where they had to deal with nighttime. Uh, conditions immediately afterwards. Here, the Weather Channel has an update. Let's get it. That eye wall, that core of destruction, that you're, you know, you wouldn't even know what's going on to your south. But folks, believe it is going to be catastrophic about 100 miles to my south. I mean, we're talking about places like Chetumal, and the farther south you get here in this Mayan Riviera, the more uh, rural it gets, if you will. I mean, you have very poorly constructed buildings, and if people did not heed the evacuations there, 
we are going to have a major loss of life. So hopefully that was done and people have gotten out of harm's way because uh, this thing, again, coming in, as we mentioned, Tim, at 907 millibars of the folks at home, that's eighth all time uh, in the pressure category in the Atlantic Basin, which is pretty phenomenal. And when you think about this, uh, even Gilbert, actually 1988, which was one of the lower pressures, came in to Cozumel at an estimated pressure of about 900 millibars. So, you know, another Category 5 joining Camille, Andrew, uh, also uh, joining, uh, obviously, uh, being here with, with this uh, three of them, three or four of them since uh, 19, uh, 1969. So not, not many do that, not many landfall here. The good news is everyone here, we are at the resort, is hunkered down in the convention center. They woke everybody up about midnight tonight. Hey, we want you all over there. We got uh, kind of carte blanche for that because we told them what we were going to do when we got here. So we're out broadcasting uh, and obviously out of harm's way. But because of the rain, the heavy rain squalls that are coming in, it's hard and you may notice that our signal goes in and out. And so hopefully we can get out there in front of the camera and, and show you what's going on uh, as weather improves. But right now we're, we're getting the worst of this, and we probably will continue to get it uh, for the next couple of hours. We'll keep you posted here from Lion Riviera. Back to you, Kim. All right. Thanks, Jim. And, you know, we're talking about as this come ash comes ashore, the storm surge with this. We're talking about a 12 to 18-foot rise in the water right there in that right front quadrant, right in here. Plus you add on 30-foot waves on top of that. Again, catastrophic damage expected. Now, this is moving so quickly. The biggest threat right now will... Okay, what you're looking at is um, forecasters prepping in front of the camera in the Yucatan. That's ABC News there on the screen. And, and there's different networks that use this feed to produce their weather updates from the Yucatan Peninsula. There they are right now. This is a live video, raw live video from the Yucatan as this hurricane is hitting. Of course, these people are up in the northern part of the Yucatan and obviously... You can tell she doesn't even have a, a jacket on, so they're not getting much rain up there. They're getting gusty, strong winds, but the majority of the heavy, devastating winds are way, way, way south of the Yucatan, of uh, Cancun and Cozumel. Now, I was just looking for observations here from uh, Chetamel, where the worst conditions are coming in, but the observations haven't updated since uh, yesterday. Apparently, these instruments have been knocked off. Um, and if we, even when we go to the uh, Cancun, um, to the Telecommunications Operations Center from the National Weather Service, we see that uh, the, the last time it was updated was 6 p.m. yesterday. So uh, obviously the, the weather observations are not working from uh, from down in the southern Yucatan Peninsula right now. Even the uh, winds are going to be blowing from west to east, and uh, Anything south of any area south of Tulum are really going to be getting pounded here. Now, our current feature at Hurricane City is Punta Allen, Mexico, which is right where my mouse pointer is on the radar here. So there's some very strong bands pinwheeling in there. But anybody between, say, Punta Allen X and um, anybody between Punta Allen and Excalac, just north of Belize here right where my mouse pointer is between here and here are just going to get absolutely devastated here this even this morning here as this hurricane is making landfall hurricane dean august 21st 2007 all right the center of landfall is coming in right near mahawal mahawal is a small town ro located right where my mouse pointer is and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Mahawal because this is an area that uh, um, is a small fishing village turned cruise ship destination and the closest town to Mayan Beach Garden with services. Mahawal is the heart of the coast of, coast of Maya. This section of coast running from Sian Khan to the town of Excalac, which is close to the border of Belize. Uh, look at all the trees out in here in the background. There's no population out in here. All the population is right immediately along the coast, which is, this is all going to be leveled here right now. But uh, there's 40 uh, Cannons Hotel. That will be gone this morning, more than likely. But all the trees back in here, so there's no population out in here. Let's continue going a little bit further north of the aerial tour. And here inland, you see that there is... Um, population and some stuff to look at here inland and there's some road uh, going inland this is uh, from 
Uh, there's no description on this, but uh, this, this may, may be a main road running into town here, going inland. And I don't know what this is, maybe a row of apartments here, or maybe some kind of beach villas of some sort. Uh, can't really tell what's in that picture there. Uh, again, these are all areas that are going to be devastated here. In fact, a lot of this foliage you see, a lot of this green along the coast here, all these trees will be wiped out, probably um, flattened. And not only whatever does survive and is left behind still standing will be turning brown. All of this foliage out here you see will all be brown. And uh, this will all uh, stay brown for probably eight months. It'll look like um, like a dead forest out here. It'll all be um, just uh, a lot of it de uh, derooted, but mostly brown. Let's go ahead a little bit further north. We're still in the town of Mahawal, uh, and it, there's another shot of that same shot a little bit closer up, and it looks like um, again those like might be little villas back in here. And there's a radio tower that's going to be eliminated this morning. Uh, this is the best we can do here this morning, folks, because we we um, we do not have uh, any live cams. And even if we did, it's pitch darkness there right now in the in these shots. So it's not like uh, even if we had a cam going, you could not see what was going on there. But this road here will probably even be washed out, I would imagine. This whole road going through Mahawal uh, will be gone here this morning from this hurricane, massive major hurricane Dean. Let's go ahead and go a little bit further north. Here's the cruise ship dock. This is uh, this is the big um, area where the ships all come in and drop all the tourists off and this building here, I guess this is uh, the villas where where um, the people are first introduced to the uh, to the, and Quintina Roo, the, the area here that's being affected by Hurricane Dean this morning. And this looks like a solid building here. It looks like it's made out of concrete, but I'll, I'll tell you, these huts here in the middle, they're going to be wiped out. Um, let me zoom in on it so you can see the construction here of what's going to be hit this morning. And this uh, building here it looks solid, but that's going to be wiped out. That's a cruise ship terminal. And that's big in this area here, right where the eye is coming ashore here. This is Cruise Ship Central. Everybody brings their cruise ships in here and drops the people off to see the beautiful coast of Mexico. It really is uh, fantastic looking down here. It's very sad that all this is going to be wiped out here. Now this is northern Mahawal. Uh, again, there's another panned out shot of the cruise ship dock. very long dock that jet, juts out into the uh, ocean here and all the cruise ships come in here and drop off that dock will be eliminated more than likely here this morning but again if you look in the background it doesn't look like a whole hot, heck of a lot of buildings to destroy here so this is going to be the tourism industry is going to get leveled here and that's where the sad part is going to come into all this I'm um, hopefully hopefully all the people got out of all these buildings and everything and if somebody did have the guts to stay here in these areas, I hope they at least have the presence of mind to uh, have a video camera going and maybe record some of this. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what's happening at ground level. This location is about 40 miles east northeast of Chetamel, Mexico. At 4 a.m., the center of Hurricane Dean was located just inland near 18.7 north. 87.8 west or about 35 miles east northeast of Chetamel, Mexico and about 195 miles east southeast of Campeche, Mexico. Dean is moving to the west northwest at 20 and a west northwest to westward motion is expected today and tonight. On the forecast track, the center will cross the Yucatan Peninsula today and likely reach the southern bay of Campeche tonight. Maximum sustained winds are near 165 miles per hour with higher gusts, Dean is a Category 5 on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale. Although some weakening is forecast as Dean crosses the Yucatan Peninsula, Dean is expected to maintain hurricane strength through the next 24 hours. Hurricane force winds extend out up to 60 miles from the center, and hurricane and tropical storm force winds extend out to 175 miles from the center. 
Hurricane Hunter plane just reported a minimum central pressure of 906 millibars, folks. That's 26.75 on your home barometer stated right now. Again, here's our recon fix. There's the last recon fix right before landfall. 906 millibars from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft as they were moving in. 906 millibars. Maximum surface winds, 115 knots. That's around 130 miles an hour, and that's pretty realistic. That's probably the type of winds we're going to be seeing down here, about 130 miles an hour in this stretch of coastline here. And again, right where my mouse pointer is is where Mahawal is, uh, right up here. So it, worst case scenario for this city, uh, northern eye wall of a Category 5 hurricane. There's going to be a huge, massive wall of water moving in here right now. And uh, hopefully nobody stayed because they will die if they stayed in this area. 906 millibar pressure. Uh, maximum flight level winds in this recon fix, 164 knots in the north quadrant. Now, that's about 185 miles an hour, folks. That's, but that's at flight level. That's not extrapolated down to the surface. Uh, there's continuous lightning and severe turbulence in the south eye wall which is interesting because then that would put the town of Exkalak, which is down in here, put them in, in where all that severe turbulence and, and lightning is located. So there, I'm sure there's many, many people, if anybody stayed, well, actually, I'm sure there's people that stayed in that town down here, but they're being woken up. There's no doubt about it. At this point, there is nobody sleeping anywhere in this stretch of coastline here. They're either running for their lives or they've probably already been killed as this eye wall is coming in. I don't mean to sound this dramatic about it, but you're looking at the strength of this system here and looking at it there making landfall on that close-up enhanced image. I mean, you look at that. Uh, look at the deep reds around the center. We did not have this when this was hitting Jamaica, when it was just south of Jamaica. It was basically oranges out here, a lot of this orange color. And not to diminish what Jamaica went through, but they probably had some gust up to 130, these people are getting sustained winds at 130 at the surface and gusts to probably 170, 180 miles an hour as this is coming into Mahawal. Truly incredible. Located just inland, near latitude 18.7 north, longitude 87.8 west, or about 35 miles or 55 kilometers east, northeast of Chetamal, Mexico, and about 195 miles or 315 kilometers east, southeast of Campeche, Mexico. Dean is moving toward the west-northwest near 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour and a west-northwestward to westward motion is expected today and tonight on the forecast track. The center will cross the Yucatan Peninsula today and likely reach the southern bay of Campeche tonight. A maximum sustained winds are near 165 miles per hour. Um. The black line indicates Hurricane Wilma from 2005, and then it sat here and stewed over this area for like 48 hours. And then it gradually moved back out over the water and then started heading in the general direction of Florida. But this area down here did get quite a bit of damage, even from Hurricane Wilma passing over 50 miles to the northeast as it passed up to the northern Yucatan Peninsula. So you can only imagine what's going on now with a hurricane almost as strong as Wilma plowing right in there with that storm surge out in front of it. Now again, here, Excalac is right down here. They're inside the eye wall. Uh, Chetamel, Mexico is um, right here. So Chetamel is also going to get inside the eye wall. Uh, Punta Allen, Mexico, is right bordering on the major intense area of weather right there. And, of course, you got Can uh, Cozumel here and Cancun up in here. They're still getting mostly tropical storm force winds, I would imagine. But all the weather observations are down in the Yucatan. They're basically useless. Um, I guess they were shut down yesterday. For those of you that are using the Hurricane City extracted weather observations, uh, it's not a problem with Hurricane City. I went to the, the National Weather Service International Observations. They're not updating either since yesterday in the areas that are being impacted right now. So it's unfortunate we're unable to get any weather observations. And, you know, it really would be nice if some people set up some instruments down there and kept them running during hurricane conditions like this. But they would have to have a generator battery backup type system in order to keep their 
instruments recording during conditions like these, because I, I guarantee you there's no power anywhere in this in the affected areas here. Probably everything inside this aqua circle has no power at this time, I would imagine. And anybody inside the red circle is getting devastated at this time. So again, let's put this in motion. And we're going to put the forecast in. And here we go. It, it moves across the Yucatan. And by uh, 4 o'clock tonight, it'll be continuing to race off to the west. This has been the most amazingly fast-moving hurricane from beginning to end that I've ever seen, uh, and barely moving north of due west the entire time. Truly incredible. Um, and here it is um, just south of Campeche, and it looks like Campeche will be getting the worst of the weather at 4 o'clock this afternoon here, and, it, and the winds will be... Uh, about uh, strong Category 1, maybe Category 2 type gusts as this passes through. Chetamel, but you know, all these areas are going to experience hurricane conditions like they, they haven't seen in a long, long time. So it's going to be interesting to see all the stories that come out of these places. And one of our observers yesterday emailed me from the Yucatan, from Campeche, and uh, uh, Ciudad del Carmen actually is down in here, and this is where he, he's located, right down here. So he might escape the hurricane force winds. We'll have to see what happens. But uh, Campeche, Mexico, is going to get hit this afternoon. When the cruise ships are in town, things change significant. The quiet waterfront is replaced by a wave, wave runners, vendors, people hawking wares, and lots of things to do. If you are traveling on a cruise ship, the itinerary may state that at the stop at Mahawal is Coastal Maya. The cruise dock is a half a mile north of Mahawal proper, so it's kind of north of the town a little bit, and this is a shot of it. Uh, this is the cruise ship dock on the, uh, in the corner of the uh, actually let's go with the last image here that, sh that shows a better shot of it um, here's yeah here's the cruise ship dock we have it zoomed in let's pan it out this is uh, where, where the eye is coming across right now or already has and there's a big long cruise ship dock terminal with the uh, buildings here where they drop off the people, but notice there's no other buildings out here. It's just parking lots or waterways and uh, ways of traveling here, but uh, not a whole heck of a lot of populated areas here around where this uh, eye walk came in, fortunately. But the cruise ship business will be wiped out for quite a while in this area. They won't be visiting back here anytime soon. This dock will be wiped out. There's no doubt about it. Um, and again... Live satellite feed from the Yucatan Peninsula, 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time here. Hurricane Warning Show, Jim Williams, HurricaneCity.com, covering Hurricane Dean making landfall Category 5, and there's a shot from the northern Yucatan Peninsula, live video coming out via satellite. up um, here in Orange Walk. Uh, we are without electricity in the southern portion of town, although I'm told that I'm informed by friends that in the, north, uh, in the central portion of Orange Walk town, there is a, still some um, electricity now. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea of um, the, the wind gusts at this time, uh, there, is, there is a nearby mahogany tree, uh, about 30 odd, 30 odd, 40 feet high, and the branches are just swinging at this moment. Uh, if you, you, you might be able to hear in the background the wind um, howling. Uh, we are getting some very fine, um, very fine rain, uh, droplets of rain coming down in like uh, horizontal sheets, huh? 
actually vertical sheets uh, right across. And uh, the situation is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we don't have heavy rainfall, but we ha we're having some really strong breezes now, or, or, or wind gusts at the time now, uh, as you, you might hear in the background now. Yes. That's the situation here uh, in Orange Walk at this time. All right? Thank you. Okay, thank you for calling, too. Thank we're still here, have, we're carrying around these huge flashlights and are trying to... Uh, to determine what exactly is falling around us. Just behind us is a, a street that normally would be very busy. This would be like one of the main thoroughfares here in downtown Chukumad, of course, practically deserted at this hour. But uh, there is uh, debris flying around. The wind really picked up since the last time we talked, just uh, a little uh, under an hour ago. The wind and the rain, uh, the wind sounds very, very loud. And uh, this, uh, it's been, I guess it's been about under an hour since it was declared that the, uh, the, the eye had passed uh, over this uh, zone. Yeah. All right, Harris, with that, we're going to check in with you. Uh, you are right there. Uh, where is, and the interesting thing as we talk about the yeah. eye wall is he is right there at ground zero, yet his location live right now does not look as harrowing as Rob's up in, uh, in Porto well, Aventura. You, you, know, you know why? Look and at it right he, there. Watch, 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 watch as it goes. He's in Chetamal. That's that. Or, am I? Am I covering? Sorry about that. I did it again. Uh, there's Chetamal, right? That's that little uh, orange. Tri uh, pardon me. Square. Now look where the eye wall goes. The eye wall is actually going just above it. So for all, all things considered, he's far enough away from it still. Uh, above it, I should say, that he's missing the real important part of the, the most dangerous part of the storm. And there's even a possibility, and I know we didn't get a chance to ask him this, there's even a possibility that he may have been close to it, because I don't know what his exact location is, that he may have actually been within the eye of the storm. And when you know when you're in the eye of the storm, you're in a vacuum. Right. And when you're in that vacuum, you don't feel any of those wind conditions. Hurricane Dean is moving quickly, by the way, as Rob uh, Marciano told us, to about 20 miles per hour, which is a good thing because it means it's going gonna, it's gonna to be heavy and intense, but it's going to blow out heavy heading due west. We will continue the track, but meanwhile we're going to check in with others who are in the uh, areas where they are really getting uh, battered by this storm. On the phone right now is Aldo Pontecorvo. He is in Meridia, Yucatan. He's about 20 to 40 miles from where the worst will hit. Uh, thanks for being with us, Aldo. What is the situation like there now? Thank you. Good morning. Well, the, there's a lot of wind blowing all over, and we have a lot of water raining down here. It's, it's actually powering water down here. And uh, we are inside of the building that we have set up as an operations center here in Merida, the state capital of uh, Yucatan, in the Yucatan Peninsula. And we are also, we are not allowed to go outside right now of the building. And uh, we are concerned about the people that was not able to be being evacuated from their ho homes because they rejected the help to be evacuated. We have about right. 60,000 people still in their houses in the lowlands. So uh, what is the situation for them right now? How You're talking about 50,000 people that either decided not to or were unable to seek shelter. What are the biggest concerns for them right now? Well, the biggest concern is that the, most of them are living in lowlands, and uh, there's going to be a lot of water get, getting there. So the governor of the state has decided to utilize force to take them out of there and to bring them to shelters because, you know, it's, uh, it's a further into their lives if they continue to be there. Uh, is there electricity? Uh, the electricity, they're still in, but uh, from time to time we are, we are thinking that we're going to be losing that for uh, quite a long, long time. All right, so uh, this is a Category 5. This is 165 miles per hour, 200 mile per hour winds at some times. It looks as if uh, the most devastating effects will be to the area south of Tulum which uh, if you've been down there, you know there are a lot of uh, Mayan ruins. Fortunately, this is not a very populated area, and we just simply pray that a lot of people were able to get out. I did see some uh, uh, reports earlier that a lot of people wanted to stay with their homes simply because they didn't want the looting. And there you can see some more lightning strikes in the background. I have a question. Pete, and then I'll uh, shine some of this light on it. Uh, these waves have gotten very large over the last uh, 30 to 40 minutes. They are breaking over what is a, a rock and, and reef area that protects a lagoon. That lagoon is completely overwatched. So uh, we are very close to these breaking waves, but on a normal day, we would easily be a couple of hundred yards 
away from the normal, normal surf zone. You can see this water is encroaching upon this uh, rock and reef fortresses, and they seem to have held up well so far in an incredible windstorm that's lasted for several hours. Back to you guys in New York. Steve, I watched you on the Fox report last night, and could you just tell me what is around you that, as the sun begins to come up? It looks like a beach, and, and where are you standing, and what's crashing behind you? Right. I'll tell you, right here is the seawall. And there used to be 40 or 50 feet of sand right behind me before you saw that ocean. And yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, you had tourists walking along the beach. It was actually a sunny morning in the morning, and then fewer and fewer tourists. Right now, you can see sometimes that water crashing up over the seawall. That beach is gone, all these tiki parlors, all these wooden benches, everything out to sea. But the buildings themselves, structurally, they've been hit hard two years ago. They spent billions rebuilding them. So far from what I can see, light's still on along this hotel. Um, the noises on the outside, apparently, um, the stuff left loose in the yard being blown about and making a, a whole lot of noise. But what we can tell you right now is that uh, it's not sounding good. We don't know what it looks like from, from where we are. We are in total blackout right now, but uh, the, the wind is really uh, blowing hard on the outside um, at this uh, point in time. We are trying to listen in on, on a little bit of uh, uh, radio chatter that, that was going uh, back and forth, but really the wind is uh, too much for us to overhear anything at the moment, and we, we don't want to venture outside because we know that it is not really safe. Um, but just as soon as uh, we get a chance to be outside and it's safe enough for us to get around, we will be checking to see what the situation is in Corozal Town itself. For the last two hours, we have been uh, without electricity supply here in the town. And uh, certainly we know that uh, at the start, uh, when the wind was just starting to pick up, we um, were driving around and we were experiencing uh, debris on, uh, on a lot of the streets, uh, mainly branches being blown off, and we certainly can imagine that uh, it has only gotten worse since the, the wind has really picked up. So we're just waiting for uh, a break in the weather, so to speak, so that we can get out there and uh, see exactly what is happening or what has happened and uh, survey the damage that was done in Corozal Town by Hurricane Dean. As soon as more information becomes available, first we'll be passing it back on. Uh, you know, have flown away. Mm. There are several trees are also down here, and the breeze is very, very strong at this moment. Okay. So I just wanted, since you said you didn't, you know, you hadn't been monitored through Corozal, so I thought I would give a small report. But, but um. I'm happy you did so, so thanks for doing so. Uh -huh. yeah. um, we don't see anybody on the streets. We haven't been seeing the, the patrols, anything yeah. but them. Um, one patrol, my grandson says, has passed around. must have been very early. But um, other than that, we haven't been seeing people. Nobody is out at the moment around here. Mm -hmm. So um, strong winds in Corazon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking out. I'm going. I'm mm -hmm. outside looking on at what is happening. And I'm telling you, the trees are really taking a battering, and I believe that sometime tomorrow morning or when this thing is true, man, we must thank God. I mean, I'm, uh, Keith came through like this, but still yet it was not something like this. Um, I tell you, this is really, really, really a frightening situation. And as I said, we are located some 19 miles out of the East City and about 30 miles from Orinqua. To me, I got a leasing cup um, veranda there, and I only hear about it like in a lift, you know what I mean? And um, the way things are right now, I only wish and pray that this thing just um, pass, man, because I tell you, I have witnessed a uh, 1955 hurricane, but I was a bit small at that time, but now um, things is a bit um, skeptic, because I, I actually can hear what is happening. Bear in mind, I won't put myself to the side, because the way things are, I don't think it is safe to go outside. Anyway, I do hope that everyone what? stays inside and enjoy themselves. Please continue to remember. I will use the word um, enjoy themselves, because um, at this point in time, if you are in a good shelter, Thank you. You, are in, you are in good health. Uh -huh. Okay. We have a... Uh, 
email here from somebody that's using a chat uh, message board, uh, U.S. Weather Eastern Weather Forum, and uh, they have an uh, observer in uh, Chetamel, and he's uh, mentioning that the wind continues as of uh, just about a uh, half hour ago. Wind continues very violently, rapidly shifting direction, but it hasn't increased in a while. And I have a feeling it won't get worse. Streets are flooded. Not sure if it's rain or maybe storm surge. Sounds are creepy and weird. Special effects sounds. Not sure where we are going from here. And let's see if there's anything new out of that area. Um, let's see if we have any new messages on that same forum. Uh, and there's Chetamel on the radar, and you can see that big blow-up of convection right near Chetamel, Mexico. So that's what they're experiencing, very high winds, a lot of flooding. Um, we've also been monitoring the hurricane watch net this morning, and information is far and few between this morning. There might not be any moderators uh, working, the, working the net this morning, but we're going to monitor that as well. Uh, Paraiso Village. Paraiso Village, Corozal. Yes. Uh, what are the <laughs> some, I asked somebody called and said that the breeze, the, the winds are at 80, 80 mm. miles per hour, but mm. so this, this, this feel like, more like 100. Yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of projectile and a lot of things they knock against the houses, no? Mm hmm But, um, the really, really scary bus. Mm hmm Really, really scary. Yeah. Um, Uno, Uno, no, have somebody who could give you the coordinates of, um, of the, the, the hurricane right now. Calling from? I'm Orange Rock. You are experiencing strong breezes? Yes, yes. And you want to know how long more you got to go? Hmm. Well, maybe a few more hours, I would think. I'm not too sure, but um, I would think a few more hours. About yeah. one, one hour more? Well, I, I'm not sure. Oh, God. It's a hurricane. Yes. Just sit tight, take it cool, and be safe. Okay, thank you. All right? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Right. Um, Patrick? Yes, Rene. Uh, morning. I just wanted to um, to come back to to mention that um, here at the um, Corozal Community College, where we are, um, we are in one of the buildings situated on the. Well, I, I can't give directions. So most people won't know where we are, but we are in uh, one of the buildings, one of the newer buildings, and uh, we can see what's going on on the outside, but we know that. Uh, this building that we are in might have suffered some damage because we are hearing um, noises on the outside with, with uh, banging noises and with every bang they, we, we feel the building shaking and, and, and what have you. So we know that this building that we are in uh, might have suffered some damage on the outside. We don't know to what extent and we don't know um, uh, what exactly is going on. We know that. Uh, the room that we are in, the, the love crew is situated in, there is a room to our right and one to the left. Those two rooms tree were or something was. Did you notice if there was a big tree or something close to the building? Um, there were trees or there are trees on the compound, yeah. um, but I don't think it, 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 it was that. I, I am thinking that probably the communication uh, equipment... Uh, uh, might have uh, gotten loose or something and might be... Back. ...shutters that we place on our windows. Hmm. And also we have the Mayor wind situated in front of my home. And oh. I was looking through the window and a lot of trees have fallen down. Mm -hmm. And it appears that things are just getting a little rough. Now, we are a little bit concerned as to what is the situation with the hurricane at this moment. Well, the hurricane, like we say, um, you are getting the back part of the hurricane. When, you know, when it's, a, it's a very large system mm -hmm. with hurricane force winds extending 60 miles out from the center. So if the center entered um, the Yucatan Peninsula, um, let's say, um, some three hours ago, um, then it's, uh, it's moving... The, you know, the hurricane winds extend 60 miles out um, from, the, from the center. Right here in the studios from people from uh, Saltenea, you know, uh, mm -hmm. they want to inform the public, their families, uh, you know, people that are worried that uh, they are working hand in hand with each other and making sure that everyone in the Saltenea 
are uh, safe and uh, we were transmitting up to where it was possible. Things got really, really bad here, so we had to cut off our transmission. Our backup system went down and uh, things are really, really serious here in, in Corozal. The breeze is approximately over a hundred. You know, um, uh, the rain is also hard, and uh, we have things flying all over the places. Uh, around here, around the Rajabaya, we have uh, things flying all around. So we want to keep reminding the people, please don't even think of coming out. You know, but uh, everybody is in tune to Love FM. Everybody is listening to the message that you guys are passing in, and we want the public to continue doing that because it is very important to do that they wait for the oil going hard. And of course, we just say uh, we would like, you know, the, the, to you to pass uh, the, the latest information about the uh, Dean because uh, many people are asking the same question, you know, um, for how, how much longer do we have to continue suffering these winds, uh, these uh, severe rain, and there's uh, so much more that is happening here in Corozal. Okay. And we want to ask, um, uh, that you were saying that we want to ask Ramon Frutas to call us. Um, um, he knows the number that, that he should call. So if he's listening to us and anybody is close to Ramon Frutas, could you ask him to, to kindly get in touch with us? Right. Well, we want you to feel free, um, my dear colleague, to use our services to pass whatever information you need to get across um, to the nation from Corazon. Yeah, okay. uh, well, uh, you know, uh, we, we have been hearing all the callings and we, we were trying to contact you from guys from, from early, you know, and we had uh, also your colleagues they uh, came to visit us uh, earlier w before all the, the the weather got severe you know and um, but uh, like how I mentioned we had to, to cut up our transmission right here we don't have any electricity our backup went down so um, automatically we can't uh, transmit none at all until the, the severe weather is over then then we would have to go out and uh, and they check now our antennas and our backup and uh, so that we can get back into transmission but of course uh, we already advise everybody calling in here you know to tune into love with them because you guys are still going on mm -hmm. and you guys are passing the, the information to them so um, uh, that is uh, a lot of help that we are giving out to the especially to, to uh, like how i mentioned to our uh, our neighbors, right, the, the, from Cheromal and the other places that are in tune to Love FM. Howling, that's the wind I'm hearing in the background, right? Yes, exactly. That is, uh, that is so you can imagine what we are passing here. Exactly the wind that you are hearing, it is what is happening here at the moment. You know, as we mentioned, uh, we had a while ago, we were uh, taking some video clips, we ha but we had to come in because of the uh, severe things flying all around and the severe weather, it, it tends to cool down a little bit, but it gets worse and worse, and uh, that, that is the wind that is blowing at this moment here in Corozal. You want to hold up the telephone so we can maybe get a good sense of it? Okay. Yeah, we could, we could hear the, the, the wind mm -hmm. in, in the background. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, when the, the weather continues, uh, it has been uh, like that as from about that to one o'clock hour, you know, we, mm -hmm. we started to get these uh, severe winds and uh, the severe rain. Uh, we had a little problem, like how I mentioned, uh, we, we almost, almost lost our tower. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but of course, we don't want to go out there and risk ourselves, but the same way we don't yes. want to nobody else, you know? The, 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 main, the main thing is to stay safe, and that advice goes for you too. Stay safe, stay indoors, stay safe. Yeah, and um, yeah. well, that is what we are doing. Uh, um, me and my colleague, Mr. Domingo Pot, uh, we were the, the ones that are in the studio, we were the ones taking the transmission out. But of course, uh, well, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't continue with our transmission, but we are in tune to Love FM. And uh, so as all the people here in Corozal and Orange Walk and uh, so on, all around the dish. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, for calling and feel free to call us back in.
righty, let me give a uh, call. Uh, uh, HR1 HGB, HR1 CP, W, uh, NC4G. You always will be doing WB4CKO to me. Uh, this is November Papa 2 Bravo. Any of the three of you on frequency, please? I don't hear anything now, uh, uh, Julio. I'm going to be out of here for about 10 minutes or so uh, uh, myself. Uh, um, George NKAT, uh, good to hear you. It's clear that I know. Mm. Please do get here. I'm going to put my phone, phone outside so you can hear it. Just listen to the noise or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think what happened is that the, 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 it's not strong enough to activate the, the, the condenser microphone um, um, on, the, on the on the telephone. So, uh, but but I I know we, it's pretty much loud. Yeah. 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 So okay. that yeah. So that's what's happening right now. Okay. Well, um, you're okay where you're at though. Yeah, we are. I'm in a, a, a concrete uh, house with a concrete crew, so. We're good. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for calling, and please call again and keep us posted. Sure. Thank you. All right. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Teneha. Maybe we only hear yes, and we know. Okay. Right. We lost. We lost the communication. All right. Love. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm coming from Corozal in the South End area. Mm -hmm. I just like to report that a coconut tree has fallen and on some electrical wires. Mm -hmm. so just to let y'all know, so people don't come out or anything. Okay. okay. And one of the things we want to remind people is that they should take every wire that they see as being a possible live wire and take no chances. We don't want anyone getting electrocuted after this thing is over. Of uh, the, the disaster that we are passing through, you know, we want them to stay inside, to hang on, and uh, just uh, follow what you guys are updating us and, uh, you know, the information that you guys are bringing to us. And, uh, of course, once again, well, we want to thank you guys, uh, that is uh, the group right there at uh, Love FM, for uh, bringing such good information to all the people, because everybody is in tune. Cool, calm sea. Definitely a different story today. We've seen all sorts of damage along this stretch of uh, beach, along this hotel property. And as you know, uh, there are several like this, hundreds, in fact, that line the Mayan Riviera and up to Cancun. Also, damage to some of the glass and some of the metal here, some of these tiki huts you see behind me here, some of the tops. Some of, uh, you know, there was about 10 or 20 of these yesterday. I can only see about three or four where I'm standing right now. So some of them have washed completely over. So, guys, the story here, and really the story all the way up toward Cancun, at least right now, has been the waves and the destructive part of those waves. We still got wind and we still got wind. Energy extends out through the outer bands as this storm will, continues to work its way ashore. So weekend, guys, weekend is only a relative. Back to you. Jim, a question for you. Do you think conditions are worse right now, even though you're not getting as much rain than they were earlier today? So there's no, you know, there's no building. There's nothing really to, to kind of block the wind or, or friction to slow it down. And each, when the rain bands come in, when the rain gets a little heavier, Marshall, it's stinging a lot more. And it's also, uh, I think, for bringing down some stronger winds. So I, I would say yes. This is, the, you know, we're dealing with the strongest part. This is a lagoon really, uh, the, uh, resort, and it is now sustaining damage to that little portion of the that is now surrounded with this water. And if I can somehow navigate over into this area, we've seen a lot of debris, a lot of branches, things kind of floating in this area, and a kid. And are apparently are trying to unclog some drains in that street to prevent the floodwaters uh, from uh, rising and entering their hotel. These are 
some of the first residents of Chetumal that we've seen venture out uh, since uh, dawn broke here. Um, very, very difficult conditions. Very, very uh, difficult conditions that these people have to endure. endure. Um, again, literally having to, uh, to wade through floodwaters, trying to find a drain in the streets that they can unclog so that that floodwater doesn't enter their homes. Uh, you had said that the storm has uh, diminished now to a Category 3, but its winds are still very strong. The rain has not ceased. The rain continues to come down, down here. I would suspect it would be a few more hours before uh, emergency vehicles and uh, the authorities can get out here to get a real assessment of what transpired here over the last several hours, Rick. Right? So those guys we're watching now are looking for the drain, right? He's trying to see if he can scrape the debris off the drain to somehow... Let me tell you something. That's an awful lot of water he's going to hope that can drain through there. I don't think he's going to have a lot of luck. Do you? Harris? It doesn't look like he is, but you know, Rick, I've, in all my travels in Latin America for so many years, uh, you always see people just doing whatever they can with whatever resources they have at hand to deal with... Uh, to deal with stuff and this guy ventured out and I, I, I've been watching him for 20 minutes or so and he literally is, is uh, using uh, a garden rake to uh, to try to un to unclog this, this drain. I mean the water continues to rise. Uh, you can see it's probably up to above his knees now. Yeah and we got the one guy collecting debris off the top of the water. We got this guy with a garden rake trying to do what he can to see if he can unclog the drain. Uh, so the water doesn't go into the area where his house is. You see part of his car is now submerged as well. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, it's, it's a tough situation. A lot of flooding in that area. That's Chethamal. That's where Harris Whitbeck has been reporting from. All 165 mile per hour winds slammed into Chetamal, Mexico, lashing this town with gusts of up to 200 miles per hour. It's a poor place where folks live off the land. Folks like Javier. Today, he... Dean destroyed the restaurant Javier worked at and leveled his backyard. The outdoor toilet still standing, but his garden flattened. This patch was where Javier worked to earn extra money selling vegetables. Dean tore a hole in the roof of the one-room shack where he lives with his wife and small daughters. He couldn't afford electricity before the storm. Now most here are just like Javier, living without it. Can you show us what happened in there? Yeah. yeah. Show us what happened? But even though he doesn't have much, he is determined to stay. Will you rebuild this? Okay, yes. 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 As showers continue to fall in the aftermath of Dean, the work has already begun. People trying to salvage what they can in this working class town, where you can see how devastation like this can hurt on so many levels. But as we drove around, we saw what the people here are made of. This baker decided to do something nice for her neighbors. When Hurricane Dean knocked out the power, instead of losing all of her pastries to spoilage, she decided to give it away. A simple act of kindness, capturing the spirit and determination of a town living on the edge. And Brian, uh, right now Hurricane Dean is expected to make landfall again on Mexico's Emerald Coast sometime around noon tomorrow as a Category 2 winds around 100, 110 miles per hour. And that is well north of the only nuclear power plant that exists in Mexico. So that's good news, right? All right, but still a force to be dealt with. Al Roker starting off our coverage from the uh, Mexican Yucatan coast there tonight. And when Dean made landfall in the middle of the night, our own Kerry Sanders was out in it along with the technical folks you won't be able to see in this next report. Things, as we have seen, got bad in that coastal city of Chetamal, and Kerry remains there for us tonight. Kerry, good evening. Well, Brian, the last Category 5 hurricane I was out in was 15 years ago this month. That was Hurricane Andrew. We were out again last night as Hurricane Dean came ashore. We're now driving through Chetamal, and what you can see is some of the tree limbs that have fallen. Uh, fortunately, we're on high ground, so as I make a turn here, you may be able to see some of the water, but we're well above sea level here. So as the storm surge comes in, and it's a storm surge of at least 23 feet, they say, uh, we're well above that. Hang on a second. We've got a power line in front of us, I think. 
Yeah, there's a power line right there. That's that's really dangerous. You can see some awnings that are down here. And there, you hear some of the gusts. Yeah, there, it's picking up now. And we're in complete darkness. The electricity was knocked out here about two hours ago. I see that there are power lines down here. And let me just hold the microphone out here so you can get a sense of what it sounds like out here. It's 4.31 in the morning here. The hurricane force winds have been battering Chetamal for at least an hour. And one reason I'm not going to spend too much time out here is the danger from things like this, coconuts, which in these very powerful winds can become projectiles. And goodness knows if it hits you in the head, it could kill you. After the hurricane passes, they don't want people out on the street because they've got to start cleaning this up. That'll scare you. There we go. That's a piece of metal. Just, that's the danger. Dean has come ashore, making himself known here.